Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Welcome to Phoenix. Uh, we are actually cooler than most cities in America right now. There's a heat wave sweeping the country. Did you know that? Nobody knows it because we're all so hot here. But now it's starting to look like 112 is cool. I'm good with it. Got to pay a price to have a nice winter. <coughs> Nothing's free. Grandpa told me that. Are there any kids here tonight? Oh. Ooh. All right. This uh, teaching is going to be a little on the nasty side, so use your own discretion. And uh, I've done a couple of teachings in a row that were kind of uplifting teachings. I thought, well, I've got to break that trend. So we'll go to this rotten masterpiece. We'll do that tonight. Let's get the announcements out of the way. This uh, seminar is canceled. Uh, I've got some mother-in-law uh, issues that I have to go help my wife take care of out in California. So brother, Pastor uh, Peter the Preacher is going to be here next week uh, for the seminar. Okay. Uh, here's my, uh, I think it's next week for the seminar. Is the seminar next week or two weeks? Next week. Thank you. All right, here's my uh, radio programs. I'm on every morning at 7.30, and then I'm on three other times during the week, Saturdays and twice on Sunday. All the radio programs are always on uh, Omni FM off the website. And uh, my Dark Sky radio uh, program is doing great. It's on seven nights a week. I had almost 50,000 listeners last week. That's a little down from my normal, so we're trying to build that back up. If you want to help uh, donate to the ministry, you can. If you shop on Amazon, go to smileamazon.com, put in our charity name, and they'll give us 1.2% of whatever you buy. They'll just donate it right to us. There's our uh, four uh, um, YouTube channels. We're in the process of adding a fifth one. We'll tell you about that later. Here's your self-deliverance list. You can send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you one of these two lists so you can get uh, delivered at home and uh, you can also donate on the website of course and uh, these are the three books I wrote that uh, Karina just mentioned and uh, our healing rooms on Thursday night is is booming the anointing there is just fantastic Rick's just killing the thing 7 p.m. and uh, we also have a mental illness healing class at 7 p.m. on Thursday nights in the small sanctuary Okay, so if you know a Christian that's mentally ill, don't leave them home with no hope. Please send them down here. There's no appointment necessary, 7 o'clock, Thursday night. I'll be on Talk America Radio coming up Saturday, July 25th. And I'll be on Omega Man again uh, next August 7th, next month. Thank you for your donations. The boxes are on the doors. We don't pass a plate around here, so... We just want you to donate if you feel God uh, wants you to support us. If you don't want to donate, you're still welcome to come. And uh, we're happy to have you. Yeah. This ministry isn't about uh, money, but uh, we've got several partners that send us good donations every month. And we get all the bills paid. We never have a month where we can't pay the bills. We have last month or two months ago, uh, it was the first time in years I had come up short. And didn't have enough money coming in. I had more money going out than I had coming in. That was two months ago. First time it's ever happened. Last two months have been fine. Tonight's Bible study is out of the King James Bible. The best translation I've ever seen is the KJ3 Bible. That's in the bookstore. It is excellent. And if you happen to read the Bible at home, which I hope you do, I would recommend one of these Bibles so you don't have a bunch of verses missing out of the text. Tonight's Bible study is on whores and backsliders. I wish I had a whole room full of whores here. I wish I had a whole room full of backsliders. They are not out of God's reach. Tonight I want to tell you a little bit about the great, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament nobody ever talks about. This guy was, Hosea, was one of the most unique servants of God in history. 
God asked this guy to do things. He never asked anybody else And to be honest with you if I was a prophet back then and the good Lord came to me and asked me to do the things that Hosea was asked to do I Shame to admit it not sure I would have had the guts to do it but this superman of God uh, learned to do exactly what God told him to do and never Never had a peep out of him He just did it. He would not fit in here in American Christianity He'd be a lost soul here Christians don't do what they're told by God. They want to negotiate a deal They want to look at the text and then they want to kind of expand it a little they want to make excuses for things they want to get some whole bunch of different opinions on it. Hosea no 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 when God told him to do something it didn't matter what it was bang he just did it period and let's do a little history here he was uh, a prophet during the reign of these kings these five kings as you know Israel was the top ten tribes and the Judah was the lower two right making up the twelve tribes God's people were split for years and he was uh, a prophet at a time when Judea and Israel were doing well they were prospering he lived during the reign of these five kings and he was prophesying to Israel and to Judah somewhat to Judah for 72 years Let's take a look at him. Hosea in Hebrew means salvation. It says, The word of the Lord came to Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of the kings of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, thus saith the Lord, Hosea 1, verse 2, Take to you a wife of whoredoms and a children of whoredoms. Well, okay. Did I hear you right? Are you did I wait a minute you want me to go Marry a whore Okay Now in our day and age under the dispensation of grace, you know, God probably wouldn't say that In the Old Testament he only said it once and Here's the guy Thus saith the Lord, Jehovah, the Hebrew God, told this guy to go find him a whore and marry her. And don't just marry any whore. Okay? I want you to marry a whore in a family tree of whores. Did I hear that right? You heard it right. Okay, during a period of time when Israel was completely backslidden and had gone into hideous idolatry, Jehovah is still working with his people and still works with people, even though they have backslidden and turned their back on him. Israel had gone into whoredoms on steroids. They were worshiping idols, feeding their children to demons. It was horrible. Hosea never batted an eye. Can you imagine that? And go to the land, for the land has committed great whoredoms, and they have departed from the Lord. What had happened? Israel was a backslider. If there's a backslider here tonight, and I hope there is. You'll find out here quickly. There's mercy for you So he goes and hunts him down a whore Here in Phoenix You got to go and go to an escort service but when I first moved out here in the 1980s Van Buren was the place to get a whore prostitutes lined the streets down on Van Buren Anybody here back in the 80s? 
No. Well, if you just drove down there, it was like a carnival. Well, he must have gone down to Van Buren here, so he finds him a prostitute who is a prostitute in a family tree of prostitutes. Can you imagine marrying a prostitute? That's a bad idea. Why is that? Because 100% of all prostitutes and 100% of all people who are promiscuous, all of them have lost demons. 100%. If you've been promiscuous in your past and slept with a hundred different guys and a hundred different gals, you are unquestionably infected with demons. No question about it. Spirits transfer during intercourse, particularly if you were in the military and you went to prostitutes when you were overseas. Hello? Don't raise your hands. You picked up spirits from a foreign woman. If you were promiscuous as a youth and you slept with all the guys in high school, college, whatever, you picked up spirits. By definition, prostitutes are loaded, loaded with demons. By definition, they're loaded. That's their job, is committing adultery, lesbianism, fornication, everything. So this prophet of God, a holy man of God, goes to another city and finds a prostitute named Gomer because God told him to do it. Never even flinched. He just did what he was told. This guy would be a freak now. Nobody ever talks about Hosea. He was a powerful and a very unusual prophet of God. Very unusual. That's why I like him. And he goes, uh, he finds a gal named Gomer. Now right out of the gate. That's, that don't sound good. I mean, Priscilla, Veronica, that's your normally, normally a name for an escort. <laughs> you go to another town, you get a prostitute named Gomer? That don't sound good. This whole thing sounds bad. He's marrying a woman who's loaded with demons and takes her home and she gives him a son. And the Lord said, name the son Jezreel, which means to scatter. For yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. And that's what happened in 2 Kings. You remember when Jezebel fell off the, the uh, building and hit the wall and the dogs ate her. I will cause to cease the kingdoms, the kingdom of the house of Israel. Hosea 1 verse 6. She conceived again and gave him a daughter this time. And he, God said, Call her name Loruhama, which means I will have no mercy and no pity on you. He did it without even a peep. Everything God told him to do, he did it. No, no, it don't work that way now. No. You ought to see me counseling people in my office. I ought to tape it someday. I would tape it if I didn't have confidentiality issues, but your mouth would drop open. I'm practically on my knees trying to get people to forgive somebody. Huh? God told me to forgive. God said, do it. It don't matter. I, I, I'm practically on my knees getting them. Bang, you know. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to convince them. You don't have to convince Jose or anything. He said, hey, you go marry a prostitute. Name your, name your kid that. Boot me does it. Name the kid that. It, they're bad names. She's a bad woman, and now he's got kids with bad names. Doesn't even flinch. Just does it. Why in the world's God doing all these things? I will no more have mercy on the house of Israel. I will utterly take them away. When she weaned Lorahama, she had a son. 
three kids God said call his name Know me which means you ain't mine He didn't even flinch Gave his kid another bad name This is a depressing scenario here But at the time everything looked great in Israel None of this seems to make any sense Israel's prospering They're gone into idolatry. They're backsliding and God is about ready to pull the plug on them. And he uses this great man of God He had to have a great man of God who would listen and do what he was told and He knew he could count on Hosea and chose him for this unusual work so you're not going to get chosen by God to do anything great or unusual until you learn to do what you're told Why because God's a dictator who likes to pound people in the sand no far from it He knows better and understands better than us. And so when he tells you to do something You just need to do it without even questioning it Hosea learned that a long time ago. God told him to do something no matter what it was he would do it period Look at this stretch He names all three of his kids exactly what God told him to name You are not my people saith the Lord and I will not be your God talking to the nation of Israel Guess what happened here's some more history 90 years after this Israel was scattered He gave 90 more years That's amazing He gave Judah 133 more years after this You know what God's done for you the exact same thing. He has sent you one subtle warning one subtle word numerous times over the years Numerous times your conscience told you not to do that Your conscience told you don't go there. Don't get in that relationship Don't don't, don't talk like that don't and it happens numerous times. What's that called mercy? God gave you Mercy like he did Israel like he did Judah This wasn't an instantaneous Judgment oh far from it 133 years There's plenty of time to repent After 133 years, you're just not going to do it. They were both reunited at the time of Jesus Remember that during his ministry Judah and Israel Were one in Palestine they were scattered again when of course 70 AD when the Romans came in and butchered them. They were all scattered again They will be reunited when It's prophesied in Luke 21 at the second coming of Christ Israel and Judah will be reunited again as the nation of Israel There's a lot of years in between all this isn't there Wow it's been 2,000 years already for the dispensation of grace. What's God's telling you? He's telling you I am giving you The longest rope you could ever dream of having but sooner or later you're gonna hang yourself And it's gonna be over You're gonna get one break after the other one act of mercy after the other But there comes a time when it shuts down same thing now same thing then They were both reunited when 1948 Israel became a nation again and will be completely restored at the Second coming right Good news ahead. Well, let's skip through these chapters here. I don't have time to go through them but chapter 2 for example Hosea goes to the people and God calls out their idolatry 
he pronounces judgment on them even though it's not going to fall on them for decades he predicts their restoration which isn't going to occur for centuries the Lord said to Hosea he came to him again he says go love a woman beloved of a friend and adulteress guess what happened Gomer Gomer gets hauled out of a career as a prostitute she backslides and goes back to her old lovers and leaves him with the three kids Now you know that's demonic Who would choose it to go back to working as a prostitute over a faithful husband and three three kids who would do that? Somebody loaded with demons would do it and God comes to him and says go get her and Not only forgive her I want you to love her are you kidding? Let me get this straight. You told me to go find a whore and then marry. Then she had three of my kids. Then she packs up and leaves me and goes back to being a whore. Is that correct? And you want me to go get her. Not only do you want me to go get her, you want me to. I didn't hear you. You want me to love her? I mean, not just live in separate portion. Wow. What a unique person. They look to other gods and they love flagons of wine. That was a phrase there that was mistranslated in the King James Bible. Ashisha enough means a pressed cake what it meant was what he was trying to say there was Israel and idols like raisins and cakes had been baked all together they were now one thing now that's what he was trying to get across the raisins baked in the cake are now part of the cake unless you've got a world of patience you don't like raisins then you got to sit there picking them out most people don't do that they just get a different cake okay. Israel idols one and he says Hosea says never even said a word not a peep so I bought her she had gone back to being a prostitute and then she her pimps had tired of her and sold her she was up for sale see that's what the devil does with it. he gets you when you're young and then he wears you out and then, then he some sends some guy to you that you should have never even said hi to and you settle for something just to survive because you're worn out worn out from a life of sin and bad men and arguing and fighting and strife and divorce where's you out yeah all that stuff you get pooped tiring he goes and buys her off the slave block for how much 15 pieces of silver and not a barley full, but a barley and a half full. They negotiated a deal there. And that's what he bought her for. And that was a lot of money back then. That was, what's that, 2,700 years ago? Something like that. That was a lot of money. And uh, Hosea said to Gomer, he says, I say, said to her, you shall abide for me many days and you shall not play the harlot. You shall not be for another man but I will be for you. What was he doing there? They took a temporary break after he got her back before they resumed their marriage. So let's skip the chapter four then. 
Hosea pronounces judgment on Israel judgment on the people judgment on the priests judgment on idolatry in Hosea chapter 4 it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge you rejected knowledge now I'm going to reject you and you will not be my priests here's how the devil works it he uses the grace of God on your life to get you to think you're okay see it's like being a kid you know if you do something wrong and nobody says anything you got kind of a license to do it again in a way hey nobody said anything nobody did anything happens all the time in school with a teacher disruptive kids test the teacher with behaviors you know they try that and see what happens then they try that and see what happens and they try to test the teacher to see just how far they can go in Christianity God sends you one little subtle warning after the other you need to change you need to stop that you need to start this you need to change that you need to say this you need to go there you need to stop going there he sends you these subtle little loving messages and you don't do it and the demons come along and say you're fine he didn't do anything you're fine Hosea spent 72 years warning Israel and Judah warning them 72 years they wouldn't do it why because nothing happened the teacher didn't say anything so that's a license for me to act like that or say that that's how it works in grade school and junior high right I did that when I was a kid I was a class clown because I was in had insecurities and rejection demons so I would if I, I knew if I could make people laugh I would feel better about myself so you had to test the teacher out just to see how much comedy you could let out in the class what you could say how many times you could talk how much you can interrupt what kind of jokes you huh kids do the same thing at home they test their parents to see how far they can go the devil told you the opposite he said hey listen you've been warned several times about this behavior and that one and saying this and doing that God asked you to stop it. he asked you to get rid of that person in your life that's dragging you down he told you to turn this thing over to him and you didn't do it you kept worrying about it he warned you over and over and over and when nothing happens the devil tells the Christian he's it's all good he's good with it he's not doing anything it's fine you're okay He said, seeing you have forgotten the law of God, so I will forget your children. You can't imagine how many parents have said that to their kids. Hey, didn't didn't we talk about that yesterday? I mean, haven't we been going over that for two months? You said, did They're not listening. Why? Nothing happens. Nothing happens. So the devil tells them, hey, you're, you're fine. You can just keep doing that behavior, saying those things, going to those places, hanging around with those people. You can keep doing that because nothing's going to happen. It's all good. See, it's greasy grace. He uses God's grace to tell you, hey, you've got unlimited amount of time. You're good. Nothing's going to happen. Just go on not listening. Because nothing has happened in the past. You got off, right? Bad idea. Chapter 5. Judgment, Hosea pronounced on the people. Judgment on their priests. The priests and ministers, they were all idolaters and phony. They were spiritual whores. Judgment on the princes. Chapter uh, 6. He prophesies. He exhorts the 
nation of Israel to repent He lists God's complaints about all their sexual perversion All their whoredoms. What's that talking about? Well back then they used to sacrifice things to idols Sacrifice some of their children to idols and then they would celebrate with great joy. They'd have a big band They'd have all kinds of music they'd have orgies and it was all perversion That's what he's talking about here. He's condemning their sexual idolatrous perversions chapter 7 says Hosea said God was complaining about their iniquity. He was reproving them for the iniquity in the land of Ephraim Who's that? That was the the great Joshua That was his son and his descendants right Chapter 8 He prophesies of the destruction of the ten tribes of Israel He warns Judah that they won't escape either he predicts that some of them will return to Egypt to flee the judgment. Chapter 9, he prophesies about the distress of Israel, the captivity of Israel in the future. He rebukes all their false prophets. Chapter 10, he lists 20 specific judgments coming and eight future Predictions about the state of Israel in that frame. Chapter 11, God reproves Ephraim for rejecting mercy. God prefers mercy over judgment. Can't you see it? He gives them 72 years of Hosea telling them, hey, you need to change. Your time is running out. It's going to be over for you He gives Israel 90 more years to change and repent and they don't do it but after 90 years boom judgment falls 90 years that won't apply to you No, but listen a point is going to come when you were been given all this grace you were given all these opportunities you were given all these chances the devil is going to smash you like a bug your conscience told you i need to change i need to stop that i need to quit and you didn't do it and boom sooner or later it happens Satan moves in because he has legal rights to do it and He used God's grace and made it greasy grace. He kept giving you time Extension you kept getting extensions Right you ever done that with the IRS? I have I Got an extension on my taxes a couple of years wasn't ready to file them if you owe money to the government, they don't like to give you an extension, but if they owe you money, they dish those extensions out like crazy. You just keep going back and asking for another extension. Well, sooner or later, the grace of God runs into sowing and reaping, and it drops. Satan's got legal rights because he's the accuser of their brethren, brethren Diabolos. He keeps pointing at you saying hey look what they're doing. Look what he's saying Look at that. He's trashing his parents. Look at look at him He won't stop living with this person and that person adultery lying cheating all of it and your conscience kept telling you hey Don't do that Somebody loves you and you're hurting them Stop that change that quit that Wow, and Israel wouldn't do it Judah wouldn't do it Hell came to breakfast. Here's chapter 12. More reproofs for Judah. More reproofs for sin. Chapter 13. God warns Israel and Judah. Their glory will be destroyed. 
and vanish because of their sin. God is angry at their unkindness. They used other people as slaves. They got other people involved in idolatry who were non-Jews, proselytes. They would recruit them to Judaism, then they would put them in their own system. Kind of like cults we have nowadays. Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Scientology, they recruit people with a bunch of lies and they suck them in and their souls are lost forever. That's what Israel was doing. But God predicts what? Future mercy on them. Amazing. You, if you added all the sins up in your life right now, you would be an amateur compared to Israel. You would be a rank amateur. If I added up all the sins in this room, it would be nothing compared to Israel and Judah. Nothing. And God tried to save them. This was before the blood of Jesus. They didn't have the advantages you have. They didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hosea did all these things without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This was a powerful man of God. Powerful, to say the least. Oh Israel, you have destroyed yourself. You got warning after warning. God practically begged you to change. Any addicts in here? Yeah. You destroyed yourself. Any backsliders in here? Man, you never backslid because of God. You did it on your own. You destroyed yourself. Sin destroys each individual person. Ruins them forever. And they do it to themselves. God never does it. Now, there's some cases where that's not true. Child abuse, curses in the womb. But generally speaking, human beings destroy themselves. Most of the time. Then he says, I am your help. Can you imagine that? Israel sinned a billion times more than any of you have. And he's still trying to save them. That's without the cross of Calvary. Without the blood of Christ. It's amazing. This is not a cheery book to read, but it's an interesting one. Hosea 13. I will be your king. Where is any that may save you in your cities, your judges? And you said, give me kings and princes. What he was talking about was Israel had rejected Jehovah as their king and they set up human kings That's what happens usually when you backslide you set up some other kind of kingdom in your mind money sex mm -hmm. friends fun They don't want him to be their king anymore. They want to do what they want to do We went over that last week didn't we narcissism I will ransom them from the power of hell. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be a plague to you. Hell, I will be your destruction. Repentance will be hidden from my eyes. Translation, God's not going to have any mercy on death and hell in the future. He's going to get rid of it forever. O Israel, return to the Lord your God. You have fallen by your iniquity. This is near the end of the book here. God is still trying to get them to come home. He's doing the same thing to you tonight. You've got this list of spiritual things for the Lord you're supposed to be doing. He's told you about it a thousand times over the years. He puts a little thought in your mind, a little thought in your heart. That still small voice speaks to you. Hey, you're doing this. You're wasting time. You're supposed to be doing this. 
you're running out of time you're getting older you're getting weaker you're getting stupider change now come on now let's go change come on change please i love you change i love you do it differently i love you get rid of these people out of your life i love you stop saying that stop drinking that stop smoking that put your pants back on your the conscience is telling you hey change do it now because your time is running out your time is running out is god going to give you as many years as he did israel no because we don't live that long we don't live that long in the dispensation of grace though god doesn't actually bring the judgment down upon you it's the devil how does he do it the law of sowing and reaping you sowed this so long now you're going to reap hell fire but before you got to the devil's judgment on your life you had a million chances just like they did to change as a person to turn your life around to stop destroying your children to stop talking like that stop the temper thing stop the greed stop the lust you had one chance after another israel had decades of chances decades god gave them why he's a merciful god he cares he doesn't just jump on you when you do something wrong he gently tries to keep helping you but at some point the law spiritual law of sowing and reaping is going to catch up to you stop eating that oh that's a good one stop eating that okay you had a million chances god told you a hundred thousand times he spoke to you gently and lovingly hey that kind of food makes you fat that gives you diabetes that gives you heart disease that gives you it went on and on and on and your heavenly father you get a gentle touch somebody spoke a word to you saw something on tv don't do that don't eat that don't don't go there stop it you're hurting yourself and your heavenly father is hurt when you hurt yourself but no you wouldn't listen you're like israel you were like judah you just kept eating crap and drinking crud well nothing's happened all of a sudden the devil moves in Boop. heart attacks bang diseases bang sicknesses what happened how come god will heal me hey he told you fifty thousand times he spoke to your heart lovingly and gently he held off that judgment from satan he held off the judgment of for others and gave you chance after chance over and over again just like he'd done israel and he sent somebody to you you heard a sermon on tv you heard a sermon at church somebody said something a friend said something you were told god sent people and told you hey don't marry that person hey don't eat that hey don't smoke that don't do that stop you 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 heard it god hit you from dozens of different angles why love love came looking for you i love you stop that i love you don't say that don't drink that don't smoke that don't eat that don't fight like that don't curse like that don't do that i love you i care for you and you thought well i'm just doing it and nothing happens he must not care israel just kept right on with idolatry they kept right on with their perversions they kept right on sinning no problem oh nothing's happened yet hey i'm fat dumb and happy i'm fine it's all good hey listen the clock's ticking on you because you're spiritually ignorant you don't see it your time is running out your health is running out your destiny is gradually drifting away from you you were told numerous times hey just spend a little bit more time in prayer today you know cut out 
a little bit of this clutter out of your life Spend some more time in the word you were told numerous times you were Touched numerous times people came to you, you heard something on TV little things came in telling you this and that and that and this it was God sending you little kind gentle messages Clear this out stop that don't eat that fix that I love you don't do that Why because he's he's some kind of a psycho heart no love pushes him to send you a loving message he doesn't pick up a club and bash over the head. No, it's a gentle, still, still, small voice. It just speaks. Somebody says something. You hear something. You overheard a conversation. Something got in, telling you, change time. Don't do that now. Make a change quickly. Yes. Yeah, I warned you. This Bible study wasn't going to be any good. Israel. Spent, oh my God, sent decades with greasy grace. Judah had more greasy grace, more chances. Don't spend that money. Watch what you're spending. You need to save a little. Hey, cut those bills out. Stop running up that credit card. Don't do that. He spoke to you. He told you. He, he whispered it to you. He cared about you. You got the word. Oh, Father, bankruptcy will happen. How come God won't help me? Hey, he tried to help you 50,000 times before you maxed out the credit cards. 50,000 times he told you not to marry another certified loser. Put your pants back on. Don't get pregnant by that psycho. He told you 50 million times. Don't do it. I love you. I care about you. Stop. Stop. My God, now my life's a disaster. Oh my God, I'm sick. I got all these bad, my bad health, my brain, I can't think straight anymore. Oh, geez. You were told 50,000 times stop smoking that, stop drinking that, stop taking those drugs, stop hanging around with those demon infected people, stop getting in relationships with total losers, stop. I love you. Stop. He said, well, this is nothing's happened. Yeah, I, I want some more greasy grace. I'll just keep doing it. They took greasy grace. Decades of it. Guess what happened? Boom. The devil brought them hellfire. Why? They weren't listening. You have fallen by your iniquity. But, says the Lord, I will heal their backslide. Are you backslidden tonight? Jeez, you could get restored in like three minutes. There isn't a backslider in this room or any room in any church, I dare you to challenge me, who sinned more than Israel. <laughs> challenge me. Pick out a guy. You know what? Hitler didn't sin as much as Israel and Judah. He wants to heal them. Oh my God, don't you see the grace? And my anger will be turned away If you're a backslider now, this is the dispensation of grace. God's not even angry at you anymore This is post Calvary God's anger fell on Christ on the cross. He's not even mad at you anymore because you're sinning Is he hurt? Of course he's hurt. That's why he keeps sending you some little messages Somebody sends something you hear something on TV something pops in on the radio Change your behavior change your attitude stop doing that stop eating that stop smoking that stop going there stop talking to them Pray more read more the little subtle loving Brushes of the Spirit of God came to you Each person in this room has had it. I know that because I know God He doesn't just walk off and abandon people he gave you a conscience he comes to your conscience he uses that as his monitor of your soul The conscience is the moral aspect of the human That's what he brushes by Danger there don't talk to that person danger. Don't marry that person danger. Don't buy that don't run that up Don't don't spend that don't don't drink that don't don't go in there 
It's a conscience thing. Hosea was a powerful book. It was a very unfun book. And I'm a very unfun person tonight. But I told you I had the last two weeks they were uplifting Bible studies. Okay. I don't do this all the time. Hosea was so powerful. The great apostles in the New Testament would quote him. Check it out. Fantastic. Romans 9. As Hosea said, Hosea in, is the uh, Greek word for Hosea. I will call them my people, which were not my people. And I will call them my beloved, who was not my beloved. Matthew chapter 2. They stayed in Egypt until the death of Herod. Who did? Jesus and his parents. That it might be fulfilled, spoken of the Lord by the prophet. What prophet? Hosea. They, my son will be called out of Egypt. Chapter 11, Hosea. Matthew 9. Jesus said, they that behold, hold, they don't need a physician. Only people that are sick. Go learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's Hosea chapter 6. Listen to me carefully. You got this greasy grace thing going, and you've been warned thousands of times, theoretically, over the years. You can repent tonight and be restored. You can get these demons out of your life. You can get this sickness out of your life. You, this doesn't have to end this way. You can change, and the Spirit of God will help you change. He wants to help you. I've made the terrible mistake over the years several times in counseling sessions after I interview somebody, and I mean, it's just my own human logic. You know, it's not some divine intervention. It's just me sitting there talking though. And I see that this person is making a series of blunders. One after the other. And I, I have a special anointing to see blunders. <laughs> I started out working on me. And that gave me the greatest training. And then I went down to all y'all. <laughs> And you know, you wouldn't believe how many times you got, I went over it, A, B, C, D, and they weren't listening. And God taught me years ago that when you use your own intelligence to help somebody and try to straighten them out, the probability for them doing anything is poor. It has to be a Holy Ghost impression. And if you don't believe me, ask any child. The parents come to him and they might tell him everything that's absolutely perfectly true. I mean, on the money. Bang, 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 bang. You know where that goes with the kid? Boop, in that ear. Boop, out that ear. Kids don't listen to their parents. If they heard the same thing from somebody else, boop, 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 they would listen. Okay? You're like the kid in the first family, spiritually. You've been warned numerous times by God. Gently warned. Lovingly warned. Don't do that. Don't say that. Don't act like that. Don't go there. Don't smoke that. Don't eat that. Stop that. Change. Read your Bible a little bit more. Clear out some clutter. Spend a little bit more time in a devotional. Go ahead. Why don't you get just a little exercise? Okay? Go walk around the block. Pray in tongues. You were asked to do that numerous times. You were almost begged to do that numerous times. And you said, I'm fine. Nothing's happened to me yet. But God, it's greasy grace. I'm good. It's all good. Those were demons talking to you. It ain't all good. You're on a time clock. And you're about to reap what you've been sowing. God's not going to punish you. He's out of the punishment business, the judgment business. That happened at Calvary. The devil is going to punish you. Why? 
as they say, as grandpa used to say, well, you asked for it. That's what he said to me. You asked for it. Newspaper. Bang. Right here. Yeah. This side of my head is dumber than that side. Really. It's unbelievable. Like a medical miracle. Check out God's attitude toward Israel. If his attitude is that toward Israel, what is his attitude toward you? I mean, he's got to be jumping for joy when you repent and change. Yes. You, you couldn't sin a fraction as much as Israel sinned. Uh, not a fraction. In your whole life, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it if you tried to do it. I will have mercy, not sacrifice. God sent the Lord Jesus to heal you tonight and give you one more chance to change. One more chance to repent. One more chance at your destiny. Because most people never find it. Most Christians, by far most Christians, never find their destiny. They die without it. That's a shame. It's a shame, I think. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 15. Oh death, where is your sting? Hell. Hadas is the same Greek word for the Hebrew word Sheol. They're both they both mean the same thing. Hell. Where's your victory? The sting of death is sin, Paul said. And the strength of sin is the law. So thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, the strength of of sin is the law. The New Testament law. God told you. Change. Quit. Start. Don't. Do. And when you didn't do it. Uh oh. Now the demons have got legal rights. To take pot shots at you. Because you told the Lord. To go suck an egg. You're not like Hosea. You don't do what you're told. You make a decision after consulting with others. Let me think about this word. How do you interpret that? No, look, it says it right there. Stop yelling at your kids. Stop cursing and swearing. Stop pitching a fit. Stop taking offenses. John 16 verse 4. I told you all these things, Jesus said, so you would not become offended. Stop it. I told you to stop. No, you said, you know what? I got a right to be a... I got, are you kidding me? You, did you hear what they said? Did you see what they did? What? That's unbelievable. That's abomination. <laughs> no, you're not like Hosea. You negotiate it out. You rationalize it out. And you end up with your destiny flushing down. Hosea wasn't like that. When he was told to do something, no matter how bad it was, my God, what was that whole story about? Oh, it's so easy to interpret. It's pitiful. So easy to interpret. It's pitiful. Gomer. Gomer was what? Who? Who's Gomer symbolizing? Yeah. Israel. Thank you. Israel had turned into a backslidden whore. And God went to go get her. She came back to him. She left him again. He went back to get her. This time, he had to buy her. How did he buy her? Oh, what's that symbolic? Of course. Cross of Calvary. He was showing Israel 2,700 years before it happened. God ransomed us at the cross of Calvary. Now you have the Holy Ghost living in here. You have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't have any excuses for living your stinking, miserable Christian life. You got no excuses. You're out of them tonight. Hosea didn't have that and said yes every time God spoke to him. Man, that's sending a message to somebody. 
listen if you're going to be in the ministry if you're going to serve god if you're going to be a christian if you're going to live for christ listen you're going to have to be around some nasty people you're going to have to make some tough calls it's not going to be easy christianity's not real christianity is not a cakewalk it's a war the devil is fighting you every step of the way First Peter 2 he quotes out of Deuteronomy and Exodus here he goes he said you are you are a chosen generation you are a royal priesthood what's he talking about there God told the Israel I rejected your priests I you are I, you are not my people your priests are not my priests that's what Hosea told him Guess what? After Calvary, you are God's chosen people. You are his royal priesthood. You are his holy nation. Israel and Judah, they were a nation of rotten sin and idolatry. Now you are his holy nation. You are peculiar people. Yeah, some of you are very peculiar, but that's not really what that word means. Parapoiesis means what? Yeah, you were purchased. Oops. Means to be bought, purchased. Okay. Why is the Holy Ghost always speaking to you? He sounds like he's a party pooper. You know, don't do this, don't do that, don't say that, don't go there, don't get involved. That person. Those are all things that a parent would tell a child they love trying to protect them. A lot of parents actually care about their kids. And if you care about your kids, you tell them stuff that you know by experience. Right? You sit down with your daughter because you love her more than any person in the world. Correct, ma'am? And you tell her things. Don't do this and don't do that. Don't hang around that person. I, hang around a, I hung around a person like that and you showed up. <laughs> yeah, God's mercy overcame that hell-bound relationship. How many have ever had that? That's right. Sometimes God can take a bastard child and turn him into a Holy Ghost powerhouse. Born with a bastard curse on him, that can be broken with the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. God's not telling you to do no 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 I made the horrible mistake on Facebook recently of putting in there how these this guy could be cured and delivered from these demons that telling to wear women's clothing that was a mistake I had a sense of what Trump's going through <laughs> the vitriol the hatred the disgust for me as a human being violating the right to even breathe breathe on this planet or to even take a poop <laughs> came through on the Facebook Eric everybody attacked me everybody hated my guts on that on that stream I shouldn't put it up there <laughs> What was I doing trying to start a fight? No, I was trying to tell that guy wearing women's clothing. Look, that's a spirit You're infected and there's help for you. You don't have to walk around wearing a dress Amen. That don't have to happen right. Oops, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, my motives were Good even though the result I get turned out bad oh, I got nailed dude what are you supposed to be doing instead of not listening to the Spirit of God, not missing your destiny, not continuing on stuff he told you to stop? What are you supposed to really be doing? Showing forth the praises to the person that called you out of darkness. You were called out of darkness and you forgot about it. Why? Gracie Grace. The more you keep doing sins that you know are wrong, 
And the more you keep doing things that you know God disapproves of, your conscience starts to sear. And it doesn't bother you anymore. You just go say what you want to do. You would drink, you eat, you go here, you go there. You criticize here, you take an offense there. The more you do that, the easier it is to do it the next time. Yes, sir. It's like drugs. You know, this amount was fine. Now that amount is fine. Now this amount is fine. Now that amount. It never stays there. Sin keeps spreading like termites. Downtown Los Angeles, we got a, a new problem down there. What's that? Rat invasion. There's so many homeless people living there. There's so much trash, so much human feces, and you're so much garbage. Rats are breeding like termites in Los Angeles. Rats are bad news. Why? They carry diseases. Can you imagine 50 million rats running around LA? It's going to be a plague of Egypt catastrophe. It's just right around the corner. Why? Your plague is coming too. The devil's going to send you. Not rats. Not rats. No. You've had one chance after the other to stop sowing in this area. And to start sowing in this area over and over again you were given an opportunity and the years went by the friends came the friends left now the sicknesses are moving in now the mental problems are moving in you had a chance numerous chances to change and didn't God gives every Christian, in most cases, a long rope to hang themselves with. A long one. First Peter chapter 2. In the past, you were not a people. That's, he's, he's quoting that out of Hosea. But now you are the people of God. Who's he talking about? Us. The Gentiles They were never in the nation of Israel. They were never in Judah, but Judah backslid Israel backslid so Jehovah said hey if you don't want it. I'll take it to the nations And guess who's sitting here as a result of that all y'all Now you obtained mercy yeah, brother Mike, you're right. I am supposed to be doing this and that and I'm supposed to stop this and that you're right and You know why nothing's happened to you And you got mercy You got mercy God's giving you every chance To change it Before it's too late Hosea chapter 2 says, I will cause all her mirth to cease. Her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths, solemn feasts. What's that talking about? We do not use that for righteousness in the New Testament. All that stuff was canceled. And God predicted it in Hosea that someday all that stuff would be replaced. With the New Testament and the New Covenant. That came out of Hosea. It's mentioned in Galatians 4, Colossians 2, and Romans 14. God gathered them again. Matthew 24. Jesus said, At the second coming, Jehovah will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. How's he going to do that? This way here. The empty tomb and the cross of Calvary is going to give you a second chance tonight to change. Amen. 
you've got a second chance some of you have had the ten thousandth chance depending on who you are you can change and the Holy Ghost will help you it's time 21st century Christians and Jews well they're kind of very similar aren't they yeah let's close out with Isaiah then yes they chose their own ways their soul delights in their sin well I will also choose their delusions I will bring their fears upon them says the Lord Israel was warned by Isaiah because of this when I called you nobody answered me and when I spoke to you you did not hear you did evil before my eyes because you chose that which I feel I did not that verse does not apply to you right now because you have heard him call you you've heard him and in the past you did not answer you can ignore your conscience it's very easy to do you can ignore it some people's conscience doesn't work anymore It's been ignored so many times. You are running out of time. You're only young for a very short period of time. And you get old like me. It's quick. It goes by fast. Ask anybody my age. They'll tell you. <sighs> Unbelievable. Your destiny is drifting away from you very much like a party balloon Yeah, the kids holding the balloon it's so beautiful it makes a mistake of letting go of it It floats out of the yard The balloon is gone. That's you Your balloon is gonna go someday And that's gonna break father's heart if that happens to you it's going to hurt him. He wants to help you. Change. What do we need to do? Hey, you need to get rid of this crap out of your life here because it's eating up all your time. You don't have any time for God. Correct? You're so busy wasting your life with dysfunctional children who don't listen, constantly bailing them out, that you are sinking spiritually. You're so frustrated with other people. You've taken so many offenses over the years. You're just constantly in a state of generalized agitation. <laughs> so when somebody says something to you that's a little cross, you instantly move on them. Why? You're in a state of continuous anxiety and agitation. Why? You wasted your life chasing people, chasing things, chasing money, chasing jobs chasing businesses chasing friends who can do you absolutely no long-term good what do we need to do God does not want you to be like Israel a stubborn and stiff-necked people Paul said that we are to use them as our examples of what not to do that's what you use Jews for don't do that yeah there's a lot of good news here you're not dead you have a chance to change 
you've got a chance to be healed I was counseling with a guy yesterday who was one of the worst sinners I'd ever met. I mean, this guy was addicted to sinning. This guy had so many demons, they were actually moving his body around. And he came to me for the magic wand anointing. They just want me to whoop, all healed, mind restored, bad habits gone, attitudes modified. Whoop, there you go. You're fine. <laughs> Brother Mike's a miracle worker. I said, sir, listen, I need to talk to you for a second. There isn't any point in me and Rick and Kelly praying for you for hours, casting demons out of you. Because you have spent your life sinning like crazy. You have made one mistake after the other. You have this guy was it was it was scary how often he had sinned and how many years he spent sinning. It was just oh they were these were not casual sins. Oh, I stole a nickel. These were nasty, filthy sins. Rotten stuff. Oh, gross. I said, There's no point in this sitting around here all day trying to cast demons on you. It's not going to work because you don't have what Brother Paul called any godly son. You see, when you were doing all those horrible things, you, you you had all those one night stands. You picked up all those women on Craigslist. You went to whores and you did you stole this and you you did all that all the stuff you done. When you the person you hurt the most was your heavenly Father. You hurt God more than you hurt them people that you did that to. And you don't you're not hurt over that. You're you're not in tears over that. You're not you don't have any godly sorrow. And the demons know you don't have any godly sorrow. See, because you like some people like greasy grace. You just, uh, you know, did something hideous. Lord, please forgive me for that hideous act. Thank you, Jesus. Please, blood of Christ. Amen. And you just go right on to the next asinine behavior. Uh, don't raise your hand if I'm talking to you. <laughs> I say, am I talking to somebody? I guarantee I'm talking to people you can't even believe right now. YouTube, my friends on YouTube, they are listening to me right now. That's what happens. See, it's easy come, easy go. Sin comes in easy, sin goes out easy. It's all forgiven, washing the blood. Dear Lord, yeah, I just robbed, raped, and pillaged the villa village. I'm sorry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then they go right back to their imbecilic life none of the demons come out not no godly sorrow no inner healing nothing happened I said we got to have some godly sorrow out of you sir you know when I first got into deliverance yeah I would have gone after that guy I'd have worn myself out yeah I, I've been eight hours on one person several times years ago eight hours a full work shift No breaks Oh spirit hold on a minute. I got to get a sandwich <laughs> No, no breaks eight hours on one some one person and God finally came to me. Hey son you enjoying the eight hour deliverance <laughs> Don't don't do a Jose on me. I, I ain't going Oh, Hosea, no. No. He said, there's an easier way to do that. You're not reading the Word. I quit, and I got back in the Word, and I stopped doing these imbecilic deliverances. I had become part of the fiasco. I was trying to get demons out of people who had no godly sorrow. Right. Didn't care if they hurt God at all. You hurt, you bothered, <laughs> You're a big boy, you can handle it. Eh. Right. 
No, God's a big boy, and yeah, he can handle it, but he wants you to understand that he's the only person that's ever truly loved you. And if you don't really care about screwing him over, we got serious spiritual problems here. You picked up all these girls on Facebook? Hundreds of them. He did it for years. Craigslist. Excuse me. Craigslist. I said, every one of those persons, you, you, you passed a demon into one of them girls. And picked one up. You're a demon deliverer. And every time you did that, you hurt your heavenly father's heart. That hurt him. Every time you done that. You go to strip clubs all the time. Every time you walked in that door, the spirit of God was grieved. The Bible says, do not grieve the spirit. Huh? Every time you walked in there, he was hurt. And you don't care. You you don't you don't have any godly sorrow. There's no godly tear. Nothing really, man. Boop. This the deliverance session is over. Cause homie don't play that anymore. Amen. I don't do that anymore, Eric. To my utter surprise, a miracle happened. This guy was listening to me. I couldn't believe it. Kelly saw it. I thought he'd run out the door. I thought he was gone. No. He was listening to me. He said, you're right. He, I'm going to do it. I said, you better pray for the gift of tears. Because if you don't care, you screwed God over. You hurt him. You hurt all your children. You hurt your family. You hurt your friends. You hurt all these people all these years. You screwed all these people over. You did that. And you just prayed, dear Jesus, forgive me, said, you signed a card at a Billy Graham rally and you prayed a sinner's prayer. So you're all done with it. It's all good. Really? And then you want to get rid of demons. Oh man, you're living in a dream world. You need to go to another deliverance ministry that sits around talking to demons. And they put the Bible in your face. <laughs> Talk it out. Go in now. What's your name? Kaya. What are you doing there? What are you, nuts? Have you lost your mind? Hey, you need some godly sorrow, friend. You stabbed the only person that loved you unconditionally right in the back, and you don't have any godly sorrow over that? We're going to have a bad time here tonight. You get godly sorrow, and you realize what you've done to the Lord? I'll tell you what. The demons crumble. Yes, they crumble. They can't stand heartfelt repentance. They can't take it. Because they can't do it. They see you do it and they go, oh my God, they're doing something I can't do. They fall apart. You got regrets? You sit around mulling your regrets for years, right? You're hurting your Heavenly Father every second you're going over those regrets because those regrets were nailed to the cross of Calvary. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, you are blameless in the eyes of God. You screwed up before? No, you didn't. You didn't screw up. God washed it away. You sitting around worrying like that? You're hurting Him. And you don't care? Oh, whatever, everybody worries. You got an attitude like that? Man, but go to another deliverance ministry. They'll talk to your demons and they'll negotiate a deal. This one ain't gonna work here. No. No. You know what you're gonna be? Come. Hosea. You're gonna do what you're told without questioning it. What'd you just say? I'm not doing that. Okay. You're not doing that, but you're going to kiss your destiny goodbye. You're going to live a very sad, miserable life out of God's will. The Holy Ghost says, do that. You just do it. That was the secret of Wigglesworth's power. 
That was a secret. He had a secret. Whatever the Spirit of God told him to do, he just did it without questioning it. And God could trust him. He can't trust you. Because you hear God tell you to do something, you start negotiating a deal. You start thinking about it. Well, maybe it meant that. Maybe it meant this. You know, I'm not sure. Whatever. You start doing that with God and it, your anointing starts clunk. It leaves and the demons then move in. Because we don't mind if you don't listen to us. We'll be talking to you day and night. Sooner or later you will. Yeah, sooner or later you'll be listening to demons. You can't stop them. You are going to be Hosea. You're going to hear that Spirit of God talk to you. Get rid of him. And you'll do it without even asking why. Don't buy that. Pay off that debt. Here, take 10 minutes. Here, prayer, 10 minutes. And you'll just do it without asking. Oh, 10 minutes prayer. No, I don't have time now, but I can do it at home in between Sloppy Joe's. Bobby eats at 4.50 and then he goes to the soccer game and then David eats at 6.10 and so I got to get to Sloppy Joe's all straight now then I got to be at the game but I, got I can get five minutes while I'm watching a soccer game. Okay, that's not going to work. It didn't work in the past. It's not going to work now. You got to do what you're told when you're told to do it. Hosea did it instantly no matter what he was told he just went and did it even if it was something that was unbelievably appalling is anybody listening to me tonight Amen. Hosea would not negotiate a deal with God I want you to go Mary and love a whore. What's the definition of a whore? Is it? It doesn't mean that. It means somebody. No, he just click, click, went and did it, without even questioning it. Yeah. The, the bad thing about grace is it gets greasy and people take advantage of God's grace because he doesn't allow something to happen to them now boom they the devil tells them they're fine and they're not they're not fine it's just simply adding up and at one point the demons move in it's over you're sick you're broke the kids are in sin the kids are addicts the kids run off it happens folks and then that's why it happens instead of doing what God asked you to do gently and lovingly here you put it off until the devil paid you back here and it was ugly let's pray Father God, this prophet Hosea, I have great admiration for. I thank you for this book. Very few people read this book and very few people ever talk about Hosea. He was a powerful man of God. And I know, I know. When you spoke to him, he would obey and he would listen. And tonight, I'm asking you to bless my friends here who are doing exactly the opposite. They are not listening. If they're listening, they're postponing it. And their destiny is slowly drifting away. It's slowly 
leaving and you don't want that to happen father god no one here committed even a fraction of the sins of the state of israel and the state of judah nobody and you love them you care for them you are eventually going to save the nation of israel because you love them in spite of their horrible sins and in that day when you come back they will repent and they will change well father god right here right now tonight these born again saints the deliverance center the ones listening to me on youtube they are going to do what israel and judah would not do they're going to repent right this second right this second and when they do the spirit of god is going to come right to them right over and get them thank you jesus for mercy thank you for grace and just raise your hand if you've got greasy grace and you've been putting off some things you know you should have gotten rid of raise your hand so i can pray for you you got you're you're using greasy grace and you're on a time clock the devil's about to drop a load of hell fire on your life raise your hand there there's another one good there's good 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 father see these hands these are your future warriors these these are your future Holy Ghost healers and deliverers the ones that raise their hands Because they are they're ready to repent and change They know that they've been doing things or not doing things committing sins and Committing sins of omission Both of them and they know they need to change They know they need to change and they're going to change right now they're going to change right now. If you want prayer right now, come down here in the front. We're going to pray for you, and you're going to repent. And those ugly demons that have been stalking you for literally decades from childhood are going to leave you in the name of Jesus. You're going to change and repent right this second. God's warned you numerous times, lovingly and caringly, hey, you don't have any godly sorrow. You've got no godly sorrow. You hurt me. You damaged me. You hurt my feelings, so to speak. You grieved the Holy Ghost. And then you just went right on. You just went right on and put it out of your mind because you didn't want to think about it. You didn't want to face it. That's what happened. And tonight you're going to change. Dear Jesus. Come on now, you can pray from your heart. Can't you? You can pray from your heart right now. Dear God, I'm so incredibly sorry. Lord Jesus, please give me this gift of godly sorrow. The gift of godly sorrow. Please save me with the Lord. Please help me. Please help me, dear Lord. Please help me, Lord. Holy Spirit, move now. Move now, Lord. Touch these people's hearts. These are your people. These are your future warriors. Dear God, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Sweet Jesus, I'm so sorry. Have mercy on me. Help me, Lord. Please forgive me. I have no godly sorrow. I want your help. Lord. Please help me. Raise your hand, sweetie. Dear Jesus, help me right now. Dear God, I have no godly sorrow. Touch my soul, Lord. Please. I have no godly sorrow. There it's coming. That's the Spirit of God touching you. Go ahead, sweetie. Take it. I have no godly sorrow. Help me, Lord. I'm arrogant and proud. I don't listen. Arrogant and proud, and I don't listen. God, have mercy on my soul. Dear Jesus, forgive me, God. I got no godly sorrow. I keep going back to the same sins, the same crap, the same rotten people. I am so sorry. Help me, Jesus. Give me godly sorrow, Lord. Give me the gift of tears. Give me the gift of tears, Lord.
Help me, Jesus. Give me the gift of tears, Father. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus. Please help me. Help me, sweet Jesus. Help me, Lord. Sweet Spirit of God, help me. Move down, Lord. God, help me right now. Give me the gift of sorrow. Good, godly sorrow. I'm sorry for my ugly sexual sins. All the adultery. The lesbianism. The sexual experimentation. All the pornography. Every time I got on porn. I grieved my Heavenly Father. I grieved the Spirit. Dear Jesus, God have mercy on me. Lord Jesus, God have mercy on me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Good. Take another yawn. Come on, take another yawn. Get out of there. I'm so sorry, Lord. Give me godly sorrow, Lord. Please give me godly sorrow, Lord. Help me, Lord. Please give me, Lord, godly sorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on out. Godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. Lying, cheating, stealing. Lesbianism, homosexuality, drunkenness, smoking cigarettes, smoking pot. God have mercy on my soul. Living in sin, marrying demon infected men, anger, bitterness, and anger toward God. Father God, I repent of it right now. Help me, sweet Jesus. Help me, sweet Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me now. Raise your hand, sweetheart. Add a girl. You got the anointing. Go ahead. Just take it right now. Take it. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. God have mercy on my soul. God have mercy on my soul. God forgive me. Lord Jesus, give me godly sorrow. Help me, Lord. Arrogance. Arrogance. Leave me now in Jesus' name. Arrogance, leave me now in Jesus' name. Anger and bitterness, leave me now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out, Satan. Come out out of there, Satan. Come out in Jesus' name. Bitterness and anger, arrogance, pride, grieving the Spirit of God, quenching the Spirit of God. I repent of it right now. I repent of it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on now, let's go. The Holy Ghost is ready. He's ready to go. He's ready to go. I renounce my wicked life. I renounce my past ugly sin. I renounce it. I repent of it right now. I repent of it right at this moment. I renounce this evil, adultery, fornication, phony religion, fake prophecies, fake visions, fake dreams. I repent of it in Jesus' mighty name. Give me the gift of tears, Lord. Give me the gift of tears. Every bad man, every bad man, every lie. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Right now. I repent of it. I repent of it in Jesus' mighty name. Come on now. Where's your gift of tears? Come on, let your tears go. Let your tears go. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. Save me, God. I don't want the devil to judge me. I don't want the devil's judgment to fall upon me. I don't want to die of an ugly illness. I don't want to die of an ugly sickness. I don't want to do it, Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Come on, pray like Peter. Pray like Peter. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Save me. Lord, save me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Holy Ghost, move. Holy Ghost, move. Where are your tears? Where is your sorrow for your insane life? Where's your sorrow? You failed as a Christian. Repent of it. And you will be restored. Come on. Where are your tears? Rebellion. Rebellion, demon. Come out. I bind every demon in your brain. I bind every demon in your cerebral cortex. 
I bind the spirit in their brain stem. Come on out now. Bipolar. Seducing spirits in the brain. Come out. Arrogance, pride, vanity, lust, bitterness, anger. Come out. Come out now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Right now. Just confess it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And He will cleanse us. All these men that got to go, every one of them, the users, all the users. Him in there, that one. Get out of there. Come up. Come out. Come out of me. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Go. Come out of my body right now. The gift of tears. The gift of tears. The gift of tears. Godly sorrow. Tears. Spirit, come out of there right now. Loose this woman of God. Loose the woman of God. Loose her right now. Come out, Satan. Come out. Come out. Arrogance. Go. Come out now. Out. Out. Get out of that body right now. Come out quickly. Come out. Come out. Get out of my head. Tell him to come out. Get out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Oh, God. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Go now. What's wrong with that guy? Just mental illness, specific scores at his head. What's the diagnosis? Huh? What's the diagnosis? What's wrong with him? Depression and anxiety. What's wrong with him? Depression, anxiety. Um, he has Parkinson's and he's losing nerves and sensitivity. Uh, was, was he abused as a kid? No. But he had illnesses. Illnesses? Severe illnesses. What well, was um, he became paralyzed. As a kid? As an illness, yes. Why? Uh, so I think it was due to a uh, influenza. Flu? Yeah. He got the flu, he got paralyzed? Is he a Christian? Yes. Is he speaking tongues? Yes. Tongues? Yes. Hey, stand up here. You speak in tongues? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Speak it out. Louder. 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 They can speak in tongues and they call down the anointing on him. This guy's got a rack of problems. Strength coming to the body right now. Strength and power. I curse you. Childhood, come out. Heal. Heal in Jesus' mighty name. Under the mush, under the body. Holy Ghost. Power. Power. Heal his legs. Heal. Under the mush, under the body. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. You get out of that body right now. You see the demon. Come out of there. You're trying to give him diabetes and a heart attack. Come out of that body right now. I know what you're doing. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of that body. Get out of there. Come out. You related to that guy? I'm his wife. Oh, his wife. Okay. He also has problems with sexual immorality. Who? Multiple marriages. Yeah. What? Charles. Both Charles. of you? Huh? Who has the sexual immorality? He does. Yeah. Uh, listen. 
that your husband is loaded with demons. What? He's loaded with demons? Oh, oh, bad. Starting from childhood. Uh, yes. He's, he's a very tormented person. Yes. Okay. Now, you have, uh, you love him. Yes. And you're kind of carrying burdens for him because of his condition, so to speak. Yes. You're kind of a burden carrier because you love him so much. Yes. And the devil tricks wives into loving too much. Because then they take that sick person and they make the spouse sick. You follow? That's what's happened here. You're kind of sick from that sick. Because that's a huge load. Huge. And nobody knows that but you. It's much bigger than anybody realizes. Friends or relatives. Yeah. It's very. That's what's causing my arthritis and overeating and all kinds of things. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So now you got to repent of this, or you're going to die. Okay. You're not going to be around much longer. Okay. You're on borrowed time, huge, and that's not what God wants for you. Okay. Father likes you. Okay. okay. Now raise your hands. Just pray after me, dear Lord Jesus. I need a miracle tonight. I've been carrying burdens for my husband, and he has so many problems. I couldn't even tell Brother Mike about him. He's so sick it's scary. The devil took him when he was just a kid. And now, some of his spirits got into me. And they're trying to destroy me. With fear and anxiety and worry. They're telling me to eat for comfort. When I should be using the Holy Spirit as my comfort. And the demons in my body are attacking my joints. And arthritis is setting in. And I have chronic pain. And so tonight, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for doing this. Forgive me for what I've done. The Bible says you are a burden carrier, not us. And tonight, I'm releasing my husband from my soul, and I'm placing him into your loving hands. And I repent of, I repent of carrying burdens for my husband. That's her husband right there, and he's, he's just chock full of demons. But they're, they've traveled into her, and now she's got arthritis. Oh, she eats too much, all that stuff. She's falling apart. She's repenting. Come on now, let's repent of it. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Food, carrying burdens, grief, sorrow, misery. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God have mercy on my soul. I must, I must release my husband tonight. Go. Right now. I let my husband go into your loving hands. I cannot heal him and I cannot fix him. I have to give him away. I have to give him to you. Sweet Jesus, help me. Help me right now. And I command all of my husband's spirits to come out of my body tonight, including this arthritis spirit in my joints. Okay, take a big breath and blow. Come on out, devil. Come on out. Come out of there. Keep blowing. Come out of that body. Come on. Let him go. Come out of there, devil. Come out, I said. Hurry up. Start coming out. Hurry up. Start coming out. Come on. Let's go. You food demon. Come out of that body. Come out of her tummy. Come out right now. 
Husband of spirits, come out. Come out of there. Come out of her throat. Come out of her throat. Come out of her joints. Come out of her joints. Come out. Come out of them joints. Come out of them hips. Come out of them hips right now. Come out of them feet. Come out of them feet right now. Come out now. Come out of there. Say that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I command you to come out of me. Right now. Right. Go. Jesus name. And a girl. Hello. Take a breath. Hello. Come out. Come out of there. She told you to come out, devil. Come on. Let's go. Carrying burdens. Trying to fix her husband. I repent of it. Controlling spirit. Come out. And come on out. Arthritis. Come out of that body. Arthritis. Come out. There. Heal. Come out of the shoulders quickly. Come on, them shoulders. Come on out. Feel that? What happened? What happened? Do that. What happened to you? Could you do that before? Could you did, could you do that before? If I if I focus, I can. If I focus, it doesn't hurt. Is the pain gone now? It's better, yes. It's better? Okay. Keep repenting. Come on. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Where's the arthritis at? The shoulder and the knee. Which knee? Huh? Which knee? Okay. Ready? Check it out. Check your feet. Does it work? It's better? Yes. Is this better? Yes. Go like that. Go like that. What about your neck? Heel. Move your neck around. Shoulders. Knee up. Is it gone? Yeah. It's still. It's gone. Yeah. Still a little swollen, but it's gone. Still a little what? Swelling. Oh, sit down there. Your purse right here. Yeah. Sit down there. All right. Wa watch this. Watch this. Watch your legs right here. Watch it. Swelling in the name of Jesus Christ. Son of God. You go out with the arthritis. Go down. Go down. Set. Come off that body. Come out. Come out. Go down. Heal. Okay, what can you think of anything else you got to repent of? Anything. Just confess it. That I haven't been in the Bible enough. Go ahead and repent of it. Go ahead. I did that before I came up. Huh? I did that before I came up. Okay. Anything you haven't prayed over yet. Anything you haven't prayed yet. Repent it up. Come on. Do you have any bitterness or bad emotions about somebody? Anybody? Yourself. Do you have any bad feelings about yourself? No. Regrets. Uh, Chronic worries. No, I have a son that needs to be saved. A son? A of okay. Would you be willing to let your son go like you did your husband here? Yes. You okay? Yes. Would you be willing to let your son go? Go ahead. Yes. Let him go. Yes, sir, Lisi. Come on now. 
Did you do it? Huh? Did you do it? Yes. Okay. Go down. So that is there anything else you haven't repented of? Not that I can Lord, tell her, tell her what it is. What's blocking this healing? Tell her. Put it right in your mind. When I married my first husband, I did it out of the supposed Christian church, and I had a vision that I was going to marry him, and he was bad news. When I met him, I met him, and the day I met him, we never left each other's side, and we slept together before the Okay, go ahead and repent of your first marriage. you do it? Did you do it? Okay, try again. You ready? Heal. Heal. How's he doing? How do you do? He's doing okay. He says that he's gonna come out on Thursday for a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, okay. What happened is now, something happened to him in fifth grade. What was it? Like a trauma, but he doesn't remember. Uh, something bad happened to you in fifth grade? You don't remember me, do you? Uh, I had a session with you once. What? I had a session with you once. When you were in the old building. Oh, you did? Yeah. Something bad happened in fifth grade? Yeah. What was it? I was, in my, I was put in the hospital. I was put in the hospital. And when I came out of there, I was told my mom told me I was a mental health. I was in delir delirious. Your mother was delirious? No, I was. Oh, because you saw your mother? No, because I was in the hospital. Because you went to the hospital? You went to the hospital in fifth grade, the fear demon got in there. Try that. Okay. Go, Paige. Go, in Jesus' name. Go now. She said she feels me going for her Okay, good. Keep, that's what we want. Keep. Okay, try it. Stand up. Walk down there. Faster. Right now, by the spider God, there has been coming right now. 
Right now, with the authority of Jesus Christ, I command all fear spirits. His wife just got healed. Awesome. Tell him. Tell him. Hallelujah. He picked up a fear demon in the fifth grade. Oh, yeah? He saw his mother in the hospital. He, then they took him to the hospital. He got scared to death. Fifth grade. Fear, fear, spirit, spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, I command you to come out of my husband. Oh, fear, come, come out of my husband. Come out of my husband right now. Go. Go. Satan, come out of that body. Go, Satan. Get out of that body. Come out of that throat. You pervert. You stinking pervert. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Thus saith the Lord, you pervert. Food demon, come out of body. Food. Come out, devil. Hatred, anger, bitterness, lust. Come out. Go. Come out of his spine. Go. Out of that spine. Go. There he goes. Out of the spine, you filthy devil. Go. Go. Come out. Every rotten spirit. Come out of my body right now. All of them, I said. There they come. There they come. Glory to God. There they come. Every spirit, come out of me right now. Sorry, you got the anointing. Use it. Come out, you filthy demon. Oral sex, come out of that face. Come out. Oral sex, come out. Pornography, come out. Come out, you filthy. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out now. Now. Come out now. Now. There they come. Come out of his throat. Come out of that stomach. Come out of that stomach. Come out, you foul spirit. Come out, you pervert. Go now. Go now. Come out of there, you pervert. Streamers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Come on, you need to start learning spiritual warfare. Put your hand on your body right where the pain is. Come out, Satan. Talk right to the spirit. Spirit of pain, I command you. Spirit of lust, I command you. YouTubers, come on. You can get delivered right in your own home. The anointing of the Holy Ghost knows no time nor space barrier. Come out in Jesus' money. Come out of them shoulders. Come out of his genitals. Come on out. Get out of them genitals. Come out. Get out of body right now. Go. Go, you rotten spirit. Go in Jesus' name. Go. Go now. Get out. Come out, you pervert. There he is. Come out, you pervert. You pervert. Alcohol. I command you to come out of that body. Go. Alcoholism. Drugs. Lust. Go. Come out of there. Right now. Go now. Come out, you filthy demon. All of them. All of them. You got a powerful anointing tonight. Powerful. They're flying out of you. You got the anointing tonight. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Go now. The demons are flying out of this guy. Come out right now. Lust. Booze. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Go now. Go now. How's she doing? Oh, she did good. Oh, great. You got to get each layer out. See, and you've got a nice anointing. You can do it. Just fight back. See? Try her tongues before she leaves. Oh, my God. 
Go! Go! How'd that go up there? We're trying here. I was the one who contacted you, Andrea. Oh, yeah. He's really good. Do what he tells. He's excellent. Great, thank you. Hey, how'd it go up there? Good. Yeah, good. Love you, brother. And you too, buddy. Thanks for your help. YouTubers, listen to me. That's Brother Mike. Brother Mike, Peter the Preacher will be here next Friday. Uh, I've got to go to California for a few days. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. When you get to the website, you've got to go to the teaching button. The teaching button. In addition, the self-deliverance buttons are also on there. Go to the teaching button and pull up the teaching on Satan's counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. Within 48 hours, the devil will try to steal your healing or your blessing. A woman uh, here tonight was healed of full body arthritis. Full body arthritis majorly manifesting in her left knee and both shoulders. All of her pain is gone. Within 48 hours, the devil will try to steal that healing and try to, the demon of arthritis will try to get back in and take her healing. Read that article, Satan's Counterattack. Read the other article, How Satan Controls the Mind. How does Satan control the mind? Next Friday, the anointed Peter the Preacher will be here. Awesome service. It'll be another powerful altar call. I'll be back the next Friday with another Bible study. It will be an uplifting, cheerful one, not unlike the one tonight. See you next time.